Father, thank you for this broadcast. Thank you for all you've done thus far. Thank you for what you will do on today's broadcast. Spirit of God, minister to us. We yield to you, we surrender to you, we receive you. Let every one of your people be blessed, your children. Let the whole earth be covered with the glory of God, even as the waters cover the seas. In the name of Jesus. Hello there. Welcome to Command Your Day. My name is Pastor Chuzi. Nanny, you're welcome. Wonder Clark, you're welcome. Joy, you're welcome. Pastor Joma, you're welcome. Bless Debbie, you're welcome. KCW444, welcome. Tamika Oshu, welcome. Adrian Esti, greetings to you. Prevail. You will prevail in the name of Jesus. Pretty V, you're welcome. Tamika03, again, welcome, welcome, welcome on Facebook. Please share as you come in. Let's spread the word. If we have to wear a mask and wear this and wear that and can gather, can congregate, so on and so forth, we can share the word of God. Thank God for social media. And it is awesome. Yes, I see you're early. You're welcome. Tamika Zero. Uh, zero zero, you're welcome, David. You're welcome. Please share. You will never be defeated again. You'll never be defeated ever. Never accept defeat. Never accept defeat. Let me say this life is warfare. Life is warfare. Thank you. I wonder. You, you, the, you, life is warfare, and I have it on good authority of God's word. Coral Ever, you're welcome. I know who you are. You will never be defeated. You will not be defeated again. The last time you wept and cried is the last time you will ever weep and cry for the rest of your days in the name of of Jesus. Never accept defeat. Prophets March, you're welcome. D DG of Ren Double Zero, welcome. Never accept defeat. Never. I will say it again. The last time you crashed is the last time you will ever crash in life. I don't know in what area you will never be defeated. You will never be defeated. The last time you crashed is the last time you will ever crash. I have it on God's word. I know I've been talking to you about winning, about new season, about the season for winning. Even as we begin to exit this month and we're going to get into the last uh, quarter or of the of the year. Get ready. Will Dyer, get ready, everyone. Something is about to break forth. Carrie Taylor, welcome. Thanks for inviting followers. Something is about to break forth. You cannot just throw in the towel and quit. No. Jennifer, you're welcome. You cannot do that. In the name of Jesus, you will never ever be defeated again. Never, ever be defeated ever again. The last time will remain the last time in the name of Jesus. Say amen to that. Never accept defeat. Thanks for sharing on Facebook. Wonder. Thank you, faithful. Life is a mystery. Life is not easily understood. Life is a mystery. Life is warfare 24-7. People think that life is just the way we see it. No! There is more to life than this. The spirit realm is more active than what you and I know, or some of us know. Men are not defeated because they are weak. Hear me. 
men are defeated because they are ignorant. Men are defeated because there's something they don't know. There's something they don't know. This life is, on earth is controlled spiritually. So whoever has the spiritual advantage has an edge over you. Whoever has spiritual knowledge and understanding has an edge over you. That's why you shouldn't mess with men of God. <laughs> There's something they know that you don't know. In Acts chapter 3, Peter said, Gold and silver have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Don't be fooled by the ordinariness of men on earth. There are people who have something that you don't have. Acts chapter 3, verse 6. Buraimo, you're welcome. Falilatu, you're welcome. Life is not a joke. It is because of ignorance that many of us think that life is a joke. Thanks for those hearts and thumbs up on Facebook. Appreciate them. Do you know that when you share, more people get notifications, more people come in? If you have to share it a hundred times, trust me, the computers notice and they begin to generate more and people get to come on in. Uh, when men, let's talk about, first of all, when men are defeated. When men are defeated. They are defeated because of ignorance. Not because they can't fight. Not because they are weak. It's not by power. It's not by might. Is by my spirit, saith the Lord. There are realms in the spirit realm where forces of heaven and hell are controlled to give and gain advantage or disadvantage over people's lives. Somebody was going through a problem on, uh, on her job and she came to me, one of our people at Glory House in Atlanta, and she said, Pastor, there's this thing going on. This man hates me and so on and all that. I said, oh. She said, oh, pray. And I said to her, that man is on his way out. And there was a second man I said, oh, that one is gone. He's gone already. He's left that place. The second one, powerful, bossy, in control, entrenched, established. I said, that one is on his way out too. Uh, but uh, that's what I know. <laughs> I don't know where the office is. I don't know who these men are. Never met them in my life. But there was somebody who spoke something that activated stuff in the spirit realm that gave one of us the victory. Ha. Huh. Amen now. Somebody was told she had cancer of the cervix. And she said, I'm going to Glory House. I need to go see my pastor. She didn't tell me anything. She came in on a Wednesday. Glory be to God. Now, I just was ministering on the communion. And I said, there's somebody here. You got a bad report from your doctor. After this communion, you're going to go back. And your doctor will check and you're completely healed. And the doctor will say, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Three times. Ronnie, you're welcome. 
and we had communion. Everybody went away. She knew what she had. I didn't touch her. I didn't play, pray with her. I didn't counsel with her. She didn't come to my office. There was no physical contact. Mercy reigning, you're welcome. And guess what? Completely healed. The doctor, Jewish doctor in Florida said three times, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I cannot believe this. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Linus, triple three, you're welcome. Why? Somebody, somebody who had spiritual engineering skill under the anointing of God activated something, ordinary communion bread and juice. And by the anointing of God, the forces of God's power were summoned into that bread and juice, and they went in and flushed out and killed that cancer. Glory be to God. I prophesy that tonight, by the Spirit of God, any power contending over your destiny, it will die in the name of Jesus. Sometimes you have to rehearse and remind yourself intentionally of all the great things God has done, things you have heard, things you have seen, to remind yourself of the Power of God that have not, have not, have not, plural, that have not allowed the forces of hell to wipe you out. Thanks to Mika for the special star. Walk by faith 2020, you're welcome. You must understand it. All men are not equal. <laughs> uh, like I said the other day, when you honor a man of God, a woman of God, you're not honoring a man. You're activating a spiritual principle. You're, you're saying to that man of God and that woman of God, I recognize you, I appreciate you, I see the hand of God on your life, I believe that you're called of God, and I want to appreciate you for all your fasting and praying and sacrifice and all of your spiritual coverage and so on and so there's that, that When people argue that the pastor has a jet or car or house or money, you don't know because you're spiritually ignorant. You, If you listen to ignorant people, sooner or later, you will see that they're truly ignorant. All men are not the same. All pastors are not the same. <laughs> Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. You can only operate in the realm of the Spirit according to your knowledge and according to the forces of heaven at your disposal. I'm saying some deep stuff today. So all pastors are not the same. It's not by the size of church or the size of jet. No. There are people that have come across and they say, Pastor, this and that. I said, go, it's done. Just go, go, go. Yeah, they will give it to you. Go, you will get it. I'm looking for a job. Go, it's done. I'm going for a job interview. Go, it's done. Pastor, they refuse to give me my money. Go, it's done. You go get it, go get it. This is so good, right, Wonder? All pastors are, it's not by this humongosity of church, no. It's by the humongosity of your knowledge of spiritual forces. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Remember, it's really a welcome. So you've got to be careful how you handle especially those men of God that don't look like men of God or women of God. Be careful because, let, let's hurry. Why are people defeated in life 
Why are people defeated in life? <laughs> they refuse to give you a teaching position. They will give it to you. Not this month. Next month, they will give it to you in the name of Jesus. Why are, okay, let's, when men, let's talk about the when first. When men are defeated, why when? Meaning there's a time, there's a season, there's an hour. It's not a matter, it's a matter of when in terms of the spiritual schedule. The spirit, the, the schedule in the spirit realm. Let me put, put it that way. Everybody is operating under a spiritual schedule. Boy, you you're welcome. Everybody is, all, is operating under a spiritual schedule. Some on earth are operating under the spiritual schedule of heaven, of God. Others are operating under the spiritual schedule of the devil. So, when men are defeated, it's because the spiritual schedule of the demonic kingdom has been activated on their behalf. Accidents just don't happen. People don't just wake up and lose their jobs. Um... <laughs> Churches suddenly come under a, a bombardment from the pit of hell. And then one day you hear the church has been closed. All of what you see going on in the world now with COVID-19 and all these and wear masks and sanitize and so on and so forth. The first was activated in the spirit realm. Now, churches can have prayer meetings. So how will Christians who don't know how to pray by themselves pray? Come on, somebody. So if people can go to church, how can they have church? See where people like us come in. So before I knew it, before you knew it, Command your day was established, yes, spiritual, spiritually arranged by God Almighty that in this hour and season that you and I will be having this conversation on social media. Things just don't happen because they happen to happen. Please share on Facebook. Facebook is blessed, anointed. We need to get more people in. Praise the Lord. Thank you for sharing. So when men are defeated, is because the schedule was set in place and there was no man of God or woman of God to interrupt and apprehend that demonic schedule. Okay? And let me say this. Jesus is coming soon, but not as soon as you think he's coming. There are many things that have not happened. COVID-19, the vaccine agenda, and so on and so forth. There's still a lot of things that have not happened. So, Thelma, Thelma, you're welcome. Good to see you. So, if you need to go to school, if you need to start a business, if you need to have a child, if you need to get married, honey, if you need to go get a degree, Go get a degree. Go do what you got to do. So, so there's a lot of stuff that have not happened according to the Bible before Jesus comes. So that, don't think that he may come tomorrow. He may come now. He may come in the next hundred years. But occupy till I come, he told us. Occupy. Blessed is the servant whose master finds him busy at the work he sent him to. 
men are defeated according to satanic schedule. And I want to pray and prophesy and speak and decree over you. And I want you to write it down. You may want to pray about it tonight. In the name of Jesus, every demonic, satanic schedule that has been laid out for you, for your family, for your destiny, in the name of Jesus, we cancel it now in the name of Jesus. We break it. We arrest it by the blood of Jesus. Kepamato samalaba. We break it in the name of Jesus. We reverse it and let it line up with the plan of God for our lives. For I know the thoughts I have toward you, the thoughts of good and not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. So if God has good thoughts toward us, how come? He says, I know, Rosemary, you're welcome. I, I know the thoughts I have toward you. So if God is thinking good things toward us, well, you're welcome. So where did evil come in? Tashi, you're welcome. Where did, the, where did evil come in? If, if, to bring us to an expected end, meaning that he has a schedule for us. I don't even want to go into people who are running behind schedule. <laughs> yeah, that is a whole new Adamasabaravetes. God will give you speed. God will empower you and quicken you that you may catch up and overtake those who are ahead of you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There are many who are running behind schedule according to God's schedule. Receive speed. Receive speed. In the name of Jesus. You need speed. You need speed. I want you to say amen to that. There are many people who are caught up Ah, Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, the thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. To give you, present, you don't have to look for it. The expected end. So, God has good thoughts toward us. He has a plan, even to the end, expected. So, what happens to men that makes them defeated because of many forces at work? In the spirit realm. To give you. You don't have to fight for it. To give you. An expected end. To give to you. So how come. How come people receive. If God is a good God. And we know he is. And he's a giver of good gifts. And we know he is. And he loves us. Yes. And he said he will never leave us nor forsake us. Yes. So where, how come people receive a bad end, an unexpected end, a disastrous end, a, just a, a mess as an end? How? Why? I speak and declare under the anointing of the Holy Ghost that in the name of Jesus, you will and well, your, your destiny will not be hijacked. He, he said, I will give it to you. He didn't say you should go for it. Hallelujah. You, you got to learn the word of God. He said, I know what I'm thinking toward you. Paul put it this way. Paul said, 
eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of any man, wizard, witch, necromancer, satanic agent, pastor, father, mother, uncle, haters, jealous people, presidents, kings, whoever. It has not entered into the heart of any man what God has planned for you and I. Isaiah said it this way. Uh, Isaiah said, say it to the righteous. It shall be well with them. Eyes have not seen. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. So if my end is guaranteed in God and he thinks good thoughts toward me and he said he will never leave me nor forsake me and he said he is the one to give me a glorious end and he said to me, First Isaiah 3.10, Isaiah 3.10, say to the righteous, it shall be well with them. So how come Christians end up in disaster, lose their jobs, fired from their jobs, pastors die, uh, killed, murdered? How come Christian people wake up with sicknesses, diseases, get attacked at night, get all kinds of, how come that Job lost everything? Okay, so if God has all these things in store for us, why are Christians suffering today? Because they are ignorant. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. It, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. We've gone to the why men are defeated because they're ignorant. Number two, because they are lazy to take a hold of the principles laid out in Scripture. They're ignorant, they're lazy. Number three, they are in the wrong environment, wrong church, under a wrong pastor, under a wrong environment. The wrong location can cause men to be defeated. i just give you three reasons. Now, how about men and women who are never defeated? Never defeated. Men and women who are never, never defeated. You say, the Bible says when there's a casting down, men will say there's a lifting up. Mm. So there are men who were never defeated and they are the great cloud of witnesses. You go to Hebrews 11, you see the hall of fame of faith. People who never were defeated. David and Tony, you're welcome. David and, and uh, oh, Samson and Barak and uh, all Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. It's possible to be on earth and go through and live for over a hundred years and never be defeated. There are people who were not not that attacks didn't come, not that uh, conspiracy didn't come, not that money problems didn't come, not that car issues didn't come, husband issues, wife issues, ministry issues, job issues, business issues, name it, they went through, but they were never defeated. Why? Because... They were made strong by the hand of the Almighty God. Secondly, they were men of covenant with God. There are people you can never defeat. I pity those who go against some pastors. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just 
Be careful. They were made strong. They are skilled in spiritual stuff. They have knowledge. And they are in covenant. Three reasons. They know. They have a covenant. They are skilled in how to operate in things of the spirit. Not every pastor is the same. So men are, there are pastors you cannot run out of town. <laughs> Jesus described his church. I love you, I'm so welcome. He said, Jesus said it this way. He said, there is a rock that if it falls on you, it crushes you. You collide with it, you get, you, you scatter. Hallelujah. There are people, there are some men and women, even if they are weak in themselves, thank you for the, for the thumbs up, even if they are weak in themselves, they have somebody, they have somebody, they have a God in heaven. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Touch not my prophets, not the people who say they are prophets, but those that are prophets by God. Mm. Touch not my prophets, God said. No, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. His own prophets, not uh, these uh, prophets that... Uh, <laughs> Ah, glory be to God. I want to prophesy over somebody. Even when you feel weak, when you feel empty, when you, are, you feel alone, you will never again turn your back to the enemy. A heavenly wind will blow in your direction. God will turn your setback to a comeback. God, may God fight for you. May he take over your... When you see the hand of God moving in the affairs of a man, you should know, you should be careful. Hello, Deborah. Be careful. There is a God in heaven who answers prayer. If you understand the laws, let, let's look at someone like David. In 1 uh, Samuel 30, I don't want to talk about Abraham when they came and took Lot and so on and so forth. He went after them. That old man, Abraham, went after them. Chased them all night. Huh? He chased them all night in Genesis 14. In Genesis 14, verse 13. Genesis 14, verse 13. And there came one that had escaped and told Abraham, the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshcol, verse 14. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, <laughs> he armed his trained servants and pursued them unto Hobba, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods and the women also and the people. Ha! Ah, at that age, Abraham understood. He was a man of covenant. 
And so he went in the strength of the cup. Really, you'll be amazed. In 1 Samuel 30, David, the same thing. Anthony, you're so welcome to command your day today. 1 Samuel chapter 30. David went somewhere, came home. Everybody in his camp was taken captive. Ah, David employed, when you are skilled, remember what David said, teaches my hands to war, my fingers to fight. Psalm 144, I believe, verse 1. Psalm 144, verse 1. David understood that there are some forces you can engage in even when you are affronted, when you are attacked, when you are assaulted, when they come against you. First Samuel 30, when David heard, David in, in verse 8, First Samuel 30, verse 8, and David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue? After the truth, shall I overtake? And he answered, in pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Highly skilled men and women, hear me with the ears of the Spirit right now. Highly skilled men and women of the Spirit Always ask God questions. I didn't know this when I got born again. They, if you don't ask God questions, life will remain a puzzle and a mystery to you. You must learn to ask God questions. Are you being rude? No. Always ask God questions. Why? If you don't ask God questions, so many answers, so many solutions will elude you. David is powerful. He could have stood up and ran after them and said, show me where. No, no, no. Shall I pursue? Shall I recover? Shall I overtake? Shall I recover all? David would first contact the spirit realm before fighting in the natural realm. Write it down. Always contact the spirit realm first before you fight in the natural realm. Make contact with the spirit realm through prayer, worship, seed sowing, Whatever you need to do, sacrificial giving, uh, fasting, studying the word. First of all, make contact with the spirit realm before you talk or fight. If real, you are so welcome. Always make contact with the spirit realm first. Shall I pursue? Shall I recover? Always the, 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 the word of God says this way, said, commit your ways. Commit your ways into the hands of God. Always make, every time I ask God the questions, I get breakthroughs that I cannot explain in terms of his responses. Why is this thing happening to me? Why is this thing happening now? Father, speak to me. Show me what I'm missing. Why? Father, why is, what am I missing? I know I'm missing something. 
you always make contact with the spirit realm through prayer, through sacrificial giving, through your worship and praise and thanks and the word, until you, Jesus said it to them this way, this way, wait in the upper room until you're endued with power from on high. Men are defeated because they are fighting in the natural a spiritual fight that should take place in the spirit realm. Somebody is being threatened on their job. We're going to fire you from your job in two weeks or next week or in the next seven days or they have been given a letter of termination and they encounter the right man of God, the right one, and I dare say, and he says, forget about it. Next week, the person who fired will be fired and you will go back and take your job. Go. But you didn't pray. You didn't lay hands. You didn't anoint me. Only Christians are ignorant in how to exploit and enjoy the men and women of God put in their lives. There are men who are oracles of God. <laughs> but we fail to get the benefits of the mantle and anointing and authority they carry because we commonize them, we become familiar with them, we think that they are not all that, and so what, and uh -huh, and so what does he think he is, and so what, or who does he think, no. You cannot put a demand on the anointing that you despise. The anointing you dishonor cannot work for you. That's where Christians get defeated. Somebody came to me one time. He said, Pastor, my husband is going for a job interview. This was on a Sunday in uh, another state in Texas. I went there as a guest pastor to minister. She said, Pastor Chusey, Pastor Chusey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My husband is going for a job interview on Wednesday. This was on a Sunday. I said, she said he was going for a job interview on, on Wednesday. I didn't pray. I didn't close my eyes. I said to her, tell he, your husband that he's not going to get that job. Oh, my God. Pastor Choosy, why would you say that? You're supposed to pray and, uh, and uh, prophesy and command. Why would you say that? What if God hears you? How in the world sh would you say such a thing? Somebody has no job all these months and years. Finally, he's going for, he got a job interview. He has a great chance of getting that job. They come to you as a man of God. You now discourage them and try to... No, 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 no. You can make contact with the anointing on the man of God through his books. Somebody asked me today, what's your YouTube page? I said, my YouTube page is Pastor Choosy. That's all, yeah. I want to check it out. I said, check it out. You can make contact with the anointing on the man of God through his voice, his voice, his words, his books. His mantles, his, his the, anything. If you believe and honor that anointing, you cannot reap where you didn't sow. That's just how it works in the spirit realm. And the lady was so disappointed. I said, but, but tell your husband that, that there will be another job that will open up. He didn't apply for it. He's not expecting it. But that is the job for him. And 
He shouldn't bother going for the other interview on Wednesday because on Thursday they're going to call him on the phone and offer him a job from another company. Oh, okay. She had some form of, hey, Pastor Sonia, you're welcome today. She, she had some form of, uh, okay, hope. On Tuesday night, the man woke up his wife and said, honey, let us pray. The wife said, pray about what? You know, tomorrow, Wednesday, I'm going for the job interview. I want you to pray with me. He said, I, I, didn't, I, didn't I tell you what Pastor Chuzzi You see, all these people call my name. Put <laughs> Pastor Chuzzi said that the job is not yours. Why do you want to go there? Well, I don't care. Who does Pastor Chuzzi think he is? Blah, 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 blah. He was upset, of course, if you've been without work for a long time and somebody now comes and casts an ugly shadow over your possibility of getting a new job, you'll be upset. But he wasn't wise. A lot of people are not wise in how to relate to the anointing. Well, he dressed up and left on Wednesday, went for the job interview, of course, they didn't hire him. <laughs> he came home and said, what did Pastor Cusey say? Well, he said there will be another job coming. We don't know when or how. Well, Thursday morning, the phone rang. They said, is this you? Yes. We found your resume somewhere. Can you resume at this job? When can you resume? Not come for an interview. Why? It's possible for a man of God to create a job where there was no job, by the Spirit of God. Glory be to God. Thank God. Of course, he got the job. Because somebody made contact with the spirit realm. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I hope I'm blessing you today. There are men and there are men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are men and women who are never defeated. Even when their backs are against the wall, they know who to contact. Ah, Somebody was traveling to another country for a business appointment. I said to him, don't go. He said, why? You're not going to get that business. Don't waste your time. Oh, he got upset with me and left. <laughs> he nearly died on that, on that trip. He came back, lost money, nearly died, fell sick, did not make, did not see nothing, got nothing out of it. And he came back and he said, Pastor Jesus, you told me not to go. I bought a ticket, I flew there, I spent money. The gentleman who was supposed to meet with me did not even come from another country. He was to fly from another country. I was to fly from the USA. I would meet in a third country to do business. He did not even show up. And you told me not to go. I said, yeah, you know, but... We pray that the Lord will, you know, we make mistakes. It's okay. There are men who can help you in life. If. Huh. I went to a place to minister. One woman, the wife of the pastor, came to me and said, Pastor Chusey, we don't have money in our home. And my husband will not tell you, tell you. He's a very private kind of person. And the woman gave me a meal after eating. She said, I've applied spiritual principles. That's what she, she didn't have money, but she knew that if she worked spirit, see, you may not know much, but you know how to approach an anointed man of God, a woman of God, 
you can provoke the anointing. Let me put it that way. You can. You can. In your hour of weakness, in your hour of confusion, in your hour of weeping, in your hour of, of, of just defeat and shame, and you're watching and listening now, may God open your understanding. May God intervene. May God help you. May God fight for you. Most importantly, if, if God doesn't fight for you, may God order your steps to a man of God or woman of God that has the spiritual intelligence to help you out of your dilemma. In the name of Jesus. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. Ah, uh -huh. yeah. One word, one instruction. The woman said, we have no money. Really? Yeah, okay. Do you have any cash on you? No, 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 I don't have any cash. Okay. Go check and see if you can find some coins. Some coins. Because... Spiritual transactions must include the giving of gifts or money or seed or sacrifice or whatever you want to call it. No spiritual transaction is complete without the exchange of gifts. I give you spiritual gifts. I use my spiritual gift by the Spirit of God to help you. You ought to also give a spiritual gift to seal the covenant. Again, because pastors have abused giving and receiving on social media and all over the world, people are cynical and funny and suspicious and apprehensive and hostile and resistant when people are talking of sin. No. But the woman understood the principles. Now, you may understand the principles, but refuse to operate them. I said to her, go find some coins, any, even if it's one cent, and bring to me. Okay. And she went off and came back with some coins. So she found them, went through so many handbags and so on and so forth. And she brought some coins. Place in my hands. I said, that's all. It's not the size of the seed. It's the obedience behind the seed. Thank you. Somebody's spiritual understanding has just opened up. And I prayed. I said, Father, she has fed me. She's operated spiritual laws. And she's brought a seed. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I use this seed as a point of contact to say that this seed, I've received it, now go and multiply and bring forth money. In the name of Jesus, she said a big amen. I took the coins. I said, open your hands. She opened her hands. I put them back in our hands. I said, this is now a seal that is done. The next week, within a month, $20,000 came in. Unexpected money, free money. $20,000. I know it's small money to you, but if you give me $20,000 right now, I'll run around my house till you beg me to stop. <laughs> Glory. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you understand spiritual principles, praise the Lord. I, our first house, 2001, I told you this story before. <laughs> I didn't know. I had a pastor friend. We went there, we looked at the house. I asked him to pray that God would bring the money and that the, the deal, the you know, everything would work fine. 
and that the house will become our house. Okay? And he began to pray, and the Lord said to me, take all the money, all the cash on you and give to him. And boy, did I have some good cash on me. <laughs> uh, I took all the cash and put it in his hands, and he prayed. Long story short, the day we were to close or finalize on the purchase of the house, listen to this, the house seller said that we brought more money than was needed. Why? Knowledge of the operation of spiritual forces to give you victory. And that's where many of us are lacking. The body of Christ is lacking. Glory be to God. We don't want to operate the laws, not prayer, not fasting, and I'm not against those, but to understand the operation of spiritual laws. We don't, we don't want to hear those things. We just want somebody to do a hocus pocus kind of something and we get our miracle. Don't work that way. Life is highly spiritual, folks. Life is highly spiritual, not highly psychological, not highly mental, not highly emotional. Cut out emotions. Mm -hmm. Somebody is writing on Facebook, I was with you in Nigeria when you gave the same instruction to a woman and she got the money she was expecting, which was delayed. There you go. Glory be to God. Somebody is writing on Facebook. What you're looking for is not difficult to find. What you're looking for is not lost. The reason why it's been difficult or lost is because you don't know who to talk to, what law to apply, what prayer to pray, what spiritual force to engage to push things through for you. That is why many Christians are frustrated. Every time I need things to be pushed, I ask God, what will it require? What should I do? Some pastors have died. Some church leaders have died. Some Christians have died because of spiritual pride and stubbornness. I'm a pastor too. Who is he? It doesn't work that way. I don't care who you are. If you're a Sunday school teacher and God says, go to that person. I'll give you an example. Am I, are you, am I okay with you? One day, God asked me, you want twins? I said, yes, sir. You're believing me for twins? Yes, sir. Take a seed and go find a pastor in Atlanta that has twins. Is he not a pastor like me? Huh? No, it's not by the... <laughs> Thank you, Lord. It's not whether he's a pastor or he's not a pastor. No. Listen to instructions. What, Father, what am I missing? What should I do to get to win this court case? What, what should I do to, to get married? What am I missing? Ask God. And I took her, told my wife, she wrote a check, I put it in an envelope, drove to that church on Sunday, left my own church, the singing and carrying on Sunday school and praying. I drove to that church, found the pastor, he was getting ready to preach. I said, God sent me, here is what he's asked me to do. Now you pray. Pastor Jesus, I should pray. Yes, sir. No, you know you're our father here. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not whether father or not. God asked me to ask you to pray. 
and he asked me to put this big seed in your hand. Yes, sir. I knelt down. I said, mm -mm, you stand. I will kneel. He said, no, I'm going to kneel with you. I said, no, 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 no. I know Shamate Baradaska Faramani. I know the spiritual law that is about to take place. It's a heavy spiritual transaction. And he prayed. He he was he 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 didn't put his hand on my he was like oh my god I said no 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 and he prayed I thanked him I jumped into my car drove back to church and we had a great service nobody knew well to the glory of God the twins came and that has gone and all. I don't know how many people have received twins through this ministry. By the same principle, it's a matter of understanding. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. So I want to speak into your, your life. You, someone who is frustrated, someone who is unnerved, someone who is overwhelmed, someone who is fed up, someone who is agitated, someone who is frustrated, someone who is wondering what in the world is happening to me, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree, I declare that that storm, that torment, that warfare, that affliction, that plague, that attack that has held you for so long, gripped you, draining your joy, draining your happiness, draining and drying up your Christian prayer life. As the Lord live it, let that thing dry up. Let it die. Let it disappear. Let it dissipate. Let it be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. And God's people said amen. Say amen. Pump those hearts, thumbs up, what have you. Connect with it. Somebody's writing on Facebook. What about if you've done everything and there is no answer? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. No answer from God is an answer. I said it some weeks ago on Command Your Day. When God is silent, it means that you should not go yet. Pastor Joseph, you're welcome. When God is silent, don't go. Jimmy, you're welcome today. When God is silent, don't go. Martha, you're welcome. When God is silent, wait till you hear from him. Uh, you, you feel you have prayed, you have fasted, you have done everything, and God has not spoken. That is according to your schedule, your expectation, your timetable. That's not how God operates. God has his own timetable, his own schedule, as the uh, song says, he's never early, he's never late, he's always on time. According to his, remember we're talking about a schedule, God has his own schedule. So if you've done everything and you have not heard from God, wait, don't move until he speaks. Secondly, if you've done everything and God has not spoken, check what you're asking for. Check what you're asking for. Check how you're asking for it. Check when you're asking for it. Should I pursue? Yes. Will I overtake? Yes. 
Will I recover all? Yes. Please share on Facebook when you come on. I really pray that God will increase the number of people watching. Check what you're asking for. Check how you're asking for it. Check your motives. Check your position. Check your location. So many things are coming to me. There are many people. Thank you, Cheryl. There are many people who are doing spiritual transactions. They are engaging with God psychologically. Some others are engaging with God mentally. Some are engaging with God emotionally. No. God is a spirit and they that worship him was worship him in truth and in spirit. For God is not a man. God is not a man. God is not a man. Engage God spiritually. Why am I being defeated? Every time I go into asking God questions, I get amazing answers. Father, what should, why, how can I get a car? I need a car to serve you. I know the car is out there. I need the money. The car is there. The money is there. You've given me all things that pertain unto life and godliness. You have given it to me. But for some reason, I'm not touching it. I need it. I can't. I can't. Find. There's something I'm missing. Show me how to get that car from the car dealership to my house. I guess one of the reasons why people don't ask God is that God will say, go sow a seed. Go. God will always in, want us to interact, to partner. God doesn't, God always will say to, to us, do this, do that. And some of us are afraid. What if he tells me to sell all my, all my treasure and give it to God? And then we miss God. Life is highly spiritual. Not highly physical, not highly psychological, not highly emotional. Stop that emotionality. I don't know why you're doing this to me. I don't have money to eat. Me and my husband, God, but we are tithers. We give uh, within. Uh, my spiritual father is Pastor Jesus. I don't know why God. No, 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 no. That's not how to relate to God. Father, Pastor Jesus is my pastor. He's praying for me. I'm a tither. I'm a sower. I love God. I want to serve you. I'm missing something somewhere. Father, in the name of Jesus, would you be pleased uh, to, to just reveal to me what I prayed over and over and over and days and weeks and months and one day he will speak to you. One word from God is worth a lifetime of waiting on him. I'll say it again. One word from God is worth a lifetime of waiting on him. Why is this man always grieving my spirit? Why is this man always grieving my spirit? What is, Father, show me what is, what is going on with that woman? I need to know. So that I know how to operate and carry myself. It speaks to you. Ah, life is highly spiritual. Life is highly spiritual. Stop engaging with God on emotions and crying. And I'm not saying don't cry. No, 
Talk to him. Ask him why. Why is this not happening? Why is this not happening? Why? Father, what am I missing? Father, I admit that I'm missing something. The fault is not yours. The, the problem is not from you. And it's, there's something you're trying to communicate with me, show me, but I'm missing it. Father, show me what I'm missing. Then, things will begin to happen. Mysterious things remain mysterious because we don't have a solution. You will never be defeated. The last time you wept, last time they mocked at you and jeered at you and asked where your God is, is the last time anybody would ever laugh at you ever again. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get your bread. We're going to have another encounter with the word, the bread, and the blood of Jesus. Get ready. Father, today, I pray that something new will break forth in the lives of your people in the name of Jesus. Let mysteries be resolved. Let impossible cases be resolved. Somebody receive it now. Let solutions come. Let doors open up. Let the forces of the favor of God be released to work for your people now. Let understanding come. Let insight come. Let help us be sent to us. Let skilled, spiritual, anointed men and women of God be released. Let that mountain be made a low ground. Pastor Doris, you're welcome. Let the crooked path be made straight. Let the rough road be made smooth. The mountain is so huge because we have not seen the hugeness of our God. Father, let God be enlarged in our understanding. In the name of Jesus. When people say they are overwhelmed, I don't know what to do. I'm overwhelmed. Where will I start? How, how can I cope? You are belittling your God. You're insulting your God. He said, there is no temptation that comes your way that does not have an inbuilt way of escape. Instead of saying, I don't know what to do. I can't cope. I'm overwhelmed. Where will I start? Who do I know? I don't know anybody in that company. How can I go about this? Oh my God. Instead of fainting, why don't you turn it to say, Lord Jesus, show me what to do. Show me what to do. Show me what to say. There must be a way out of this thing. And then, if you do not ask God such questions, you will not get the answers you're looking for. Life will be frustrating. I will not, I wish I had time to tell you I'm stuck in traffic. I say, Father, this traffic is, is not moving. Show me what to do. Change your lane. Go to the left lane. Left lane. All lanes are the same. No, all lanes are not the same in traffic, honey. <laughs> Some lanes are the lanes that are already accidented. There's an accident on that lane, but you can see it. And God says, change lanes, change direction, because he can see it. And then you change lanes and get to the, oh, I see. Change your method. Don't pray today. Praise me. Go on a fast. Do nothing. Just go about your business. Read your word. And so go. You, people come to me, call me from everywhere. Pastors, bishops, archbishops, apostles, evangelists, pastors, preachers, prophets, name it. God said I should call you Pastor Chusey. Ah, okay. Well, would you be kind enough to do what this uh, humble man says? Yeah, do this. 
Really? But I, I, just do it. And then things begin to happen. Pastor Tuesday, you said so. No, I didn't say so. God said so. Glory be to God. So many testimonies are coming to me, but I don't want to keep you because the Friday, you've got to do what you've got to do. If you're not born again, say after me, Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Write my name in your book of life, and I thank you for dying for me in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for those who said that prayer, that you would forgive them, wash them with your blood, and keep them till the end. In Jesus' mighty name, and God's people said amen. If you're ready with your bread and your juice, please type one. I need 10 people at least on Facebook, 10 on Periscope and wherever so we can break bread and we close. This bread, this communion tonight is for divine intervention. Oh boy, so many people are ready on Periscope. Anybody ready on Facebook? Uh, if you don't have the juice, go get some water, get some piece of cake or bread or something. Amen now. I see two people on Facebook. Let's wait. Gogoras, you're welcome. Let's wait. Let's wait. Get your bread. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Would you mind sharing again on Facebook before we go? For I have received of the Lord Jesus, of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Father, tonight, let the anointing for divine intervention be released on this bread. Let the anointing for victory that we will no more suffer any defeat. Let that anointing be released now. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, Scarlet, hurry up, go get your bread, get some water, get some Coke, something. We're about to break bread. Go find a crumb of bread if you have to, honey. We receive that bread. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. You may now eat. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament or a new covenant in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Tonight we receive the life in the blood of Jesus. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. No blood, no life. You know that scientifically, biologically. The blood of Jesus carries the life force of Jesus. I say it by the Spirit of God. You will never weep on the account of any defeat, any enemy, any hater, any adversary, any attack, any attacker, any sudden setback, any 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 bombardment from the pit of hell, it is over. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, you may now drink. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. We give you praise, we give you thanks, we give you honor. In Jesus' name, and God's people said, Amen. One more thing before we rush off. is offering time on command your day. Tithing time, offering time, seed sowing time, what have you. Get it ready, get it ready, get it ready. This is the last Friday of this month. 
Oh my God, what a month, what a month, what a month. Father, we thank you for keeping us well and alive. We are our loved ones from January to February to March to April to May to June to July to August. Can you believe that? This is the last Friday of this month, and tomorrow is the last Saturday, and Sunday is the last Sunday. Oh my God, thank you, Father, for keeping us. In Jesus' name. You can use Cash App, dollar sign, Glory Church, Cash App, dollar sign, Glory Church. Somebody please help us put it up on Facebook. You can use Zelle, 770-909-5000, 770-909-5000 on Zelle. You can use Cash App. Hello, Mary. You're welcome. You can also use PayPal for those outside of the USA. You can use PayPal, glorytelevision at gmail.com, glorytelevision at gmail.com. Thank you, Soul Healing for Life. You can also use our website, glory to glorychurch.org, glory to glorychurch.org. Click on the donate button. Indicate if it's a tithe or offering. We've been using it. Our members, Command Your Day Family. All these years, use them, and I want to thank you for your faithfulness in supporting and sowing and reaping. Father, I pray over the offering and tithe and the seeds of your people today. No one can give except you give them and give them the grace to give it. If we have ministered to you by the word, minister back to us by your giving. And so honor the giving of all of us tonight, cleanse all the seeds with your blood and breathe upon it. No more shame, no more defeat, no more disaster, no more frustration. As we begin to round up this month and enter into the new month, no more waiting, no more hurting. Don't worry about what people said and how people didn't respond and what people did to you and how they treated you. Don't worry about that. God is about to show forth for you. Just mark my word. No more defeat. No more defeat. Let them say what they want to say. That's theirs. Wait till God breaks forth on your behalf. Let the, you better let people... See, when people laugh and mock and jeer and make comments and uh, behave funny, I don't get offended. Why? Because now I know who they are. How would you know who people are if they don't show you who they are? By their fruit, you shall know them. I don't get upset. Oh, is, oh this is who you are? Oh, I thought you were a friend. Oh, I thought, I mean, you just, you just, you just believe God. A friend, a pastor friend of mine passed, went to heaven last week. He was praying in his church, and then they didn't hear from him. They went in Saturday morning and found out that he had gone to heaven. Boy, and just less than two weeks ago, I spoke with him for over three hours, three hours talking with him. Didn't know <laughs> that this was the last conversation on earth with him. Today, a great man of God that I respect so much called me and was telling me that he had two dreams where that pastor who died First, the pastor was saying to him that he was crying in the dream. I'm saying that to say something to you. He was weeping in the dream and saying that he did not finish his work. He did not finish his work. He said he did not finish his mechanical engineering. That he did not finish his mechanical engineering that he's a mechanical engineer. He didn't finish his, his mechanical work, his mechanical engineering. 
and he died. He didn't finish it. The pastor said he woke up. This Another pastor is telling me about a dream he had about the pastor who died. He said he went back to sleep. He had the same dream. This time it was the pastor's, the late, the dead pastor's wife crying out to him and saying that her husband did not finish his mechanical engineering work, his mechanical engineering work, his mechanical engineering work. So the pastor who called me today said, Pastor Jesus, do you know what that means? I said, of course I do know what that means. The pastor who died, died at 55. He was 55 in May. At 55. A man of God was found dead in his church, 55 years old. He was 55 in May this year. So he said to me, I understand, but what about this mechanical engineering, mechanical? I said, yeah. <laughs> I said to the pastor, every child of God has an assignment on earth. He was, uh, this pastor who died was a man of prayer, a man of deliverance. He believed in the demonstration of the power of God. He loved to see people set free, heal, deliver. He loved to cast out devils. And so one of the things he said to me when I had that three hour conversation with him was I said, I love the power of God. Anywhere the power of God is, you will find me there. I didn't know that that was my last conversation with him. Good man, my good friend. His departure made me, uh, it was only today, last yesterday, that I came out of that thing. I just, oh, uh, it was so... So the pastor is asking me, so what does uh, uh, mechanical engineering, I say, he sure was a, he was a spiritual engineer because he, did, he was an engineer for God, for real. He, he, he fixed people's lives. He fixed destinies. He changed spiritual parts. He brought healing. He brought deliverance. As an engineer, he fixed things and made things move. And, and oh, the pastor, yeah, 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 now I understand it, I understand it, I understand it, I understand it. I said, yeah. I said, glory be to God. I want to decree and prophesy over you. You will finish your assignment in the name of Jesus. We will finish our assignment. We will not die. I break the curse of premature death, untimely death. I break it off of you. I break it off of me. I break it off of your family. I break it off of my family. In the name of Jesus, you will not be cut short. We and our households will not be cut short. We will not expire. Come on, get your amen, get your thumb, whatever you need to do to connect with it. Pump something, get something, type something. You will not, we will not be cut short. We will not expire. We will refire. We will not retire. In the name of Jesus, you will not die. You will live to declare the glory of God in the land of the living. I don't care how sick you feel. I curse sickness and infirmity in your life. I command it to lose you and let you go. In, we come against any spirit of death, of dying, premature death, untimely death. I don't care how long it's been in your family. By the blood of Jesus, we break it. We break it. We break it. We break it in the name of Jesus. We declare life in the land of the living. I don't care how many dreams you've had and how many caskets you've seen in the dream and how many dead people you've seen. 
No! By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, let all those people you have seen in the dream, let them catch fire and die. Every attacker, every satanic spirit, witchcraft dispatches, enchantments, divination, sorcery, untimely death spirit, premature death spirit, spirit of accident, screaming in the dream, attack in the dream, whatever from the pit of hell is released against you and I, let them catch fire and die in the name of Jesus. Catch fire and die. 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 Catch fire and die in the name of Jesus. We will live, we and our households, to declare the glory of God in the land of the living. No pastor is permitted to die before his time ever again. Never. How can a man die at 55? Do you know how much investment God put upon his life? Even his spirit is crying out. Even his wife, I spoke to her today, she's crying out. He did not see any of his children get married. And she gave me the date. They fixed the date for the funeral sometime in next month. I want you to pray this prayer very with all your heart. If you need to fast, fast and pray. Come against the spirit of untimely death in your life. I pray that you get it. Ruth Favor, you're welcome. I don't care what Dr. Fossey is saying and Bill Gates is saying and the Republicans are saying and the Democrats are saying and independents. All I know is that there's a God in heaven who rules in the affairs of men. And that God is my father and your father. With long life, he was satisfied. Not just long life with sickness and disease. Long life with health and wealth. There is no way you can convince me that it's God's will that a man of God die at 55. How about his church, his ministry, his wife, his children, his church members? The devil is a liar. And so is his grandmother. Victory is ours. And I say it again to you before we go. You will never be defeated. No! No more defeat. You've cried enough. Go and ask God to show you what you're missing. What you're missing. What you're missing. God is still a healer. God is still a healer. God is still a deliverer. And I thank God for you in the name of Jesus. I believe I'm done. Some people, they ask me, Pastor, how can I send you a gift? If I want to send you a financial gift, I want to sow into your life. Uh, do, are you on Cash App? I say, yes. So somebody put up a Cash App, CYD slash Pastor P. Choosy. You can use Cash App, Cash App, CYD, slash Pastor Choosy, CYD. Somebody put it on Facebook and on Periscope, CYD slash Pastor Choosy. Dollar sign, CYD, C-A-A-H, dollar sign, CYD. C A A H. Okay, Father, bless your people in Jesus' name. I will see you Sunday morning. Thank you for putting up. You can put dollar sign C Y D slash dollar sign C Y D dollar sign C Y D C A A H. 
Glory be to God. Dollar sign C Y D C A A H. Put it on the screen. So uh, there you go. C A. Thank you. I'll prevail. Put it. Uh, pass, uh, put it on Facebook for me. Somebody. Dollar sign C Y D C A A H. Okay. That's it. The Lord bless you. Keep you. Preserve you. God bless you, Danny David. I'll see you on Sunday morning. I'll be in church. We're still having church services. Last Sunday of this month, coming Sunday, try and get to church. Get to church online, on site. Stop hiding in your house, so scared and afraid. Faith is the weapon that overcomes the world. Uh, if you want to use PayPal, Rosemary is asking, if you want to use PayPal, you can use uh, glorytelevision at gmail.com. I don't have a personal PayPal. I'll set it up. Okay. You can use uh, Glory Television. Somebody put on the Facebook for her. Glory Television at gmail.com and indicate that this is for Pastor Choosy or what have you. I don't like <laughs> raising money for myself on social media. That's not what we're called to do. Okay, uh, Rosemary, God bless you. You can also text me, 404-935-2878. WhatsApp me, 404-935-2878. All of you who have been sending me dreams to interpret for you, uh, emailing me your testimonies, WhatsApping me, telling me all the great things happening in your life or asking me to pray. Thank you for the opportunity to be involved in your spiritual growth and progress and blessings. God bless you. I will see you on Sunday morning. Don't forget it's not over until you win. Bye-bye.